Sometimes computers just crash. It's a lesson some of us have learned the hard way. And if you don't want to lose what's on your computer forever, an external hard drive is one option. Thor Schrock from Schrock Innovations returns to offer a little bit of insight on the topic. Good to see you, Thor. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, so I bought one. I bought a couple of these things, and now you can buy them with one terabyte, two terabyte. All the way to four. Four terabytes? Yeah. So there's a lot of memory in these things. How reliable are they? All right, so with, with an external hard drive, Inside that little box, if you, if you take the screws out and clip all the plastic off, inside you will find the exact same hard drive that's inside your computer. It's, it's just another hard drive. Oh, okay. So it has all the normal fallibilities of a regular hard drive. But one of the biggest problems that we see, especially among Mac users, um, is you know you get that big iMac, you can't just throw an extra hard drive in there. There's no yeah. spot for it because mm -hmm. it's all built as one unit. And so when people like photographers especially need right. extra storage in their, on their iMac, they'll hook up an external hard drive and use that as primary storage. Mm. So in other words, you know, I, I took a picture of you know, somebody's wedding and I'm gonna right. save it on the external hard drive because I have no space left on my main hard drive. That's where people get in trouble with external hard drives. That's what I do. Yeah, because, I use it as a permanent storage unit. Yeah, and it's fine to do that as long as you have a second external hard drive back plugged in, up. backing that up. Gotcha. Because what happens is external hard drives, inside your computer is the safest place for a hard drive to be. Because the way the computer is built, if the computer tips on its side, mm -hmm. if a cat jumps up and knocks your iMac back against the wall or something, you know, it's designed to absorb those kind of blows for the hard drive. External hard drive enclosures can't do that. So just taking you know, that little external hard drive that sits like this on the desk, mm -hmm. putting your finger on it and going, and letting it fall over on its side. You don't even have to make the sound, you can just mm -hmm. push it. Right. Um, and if it falls over on its side, that's enough to cause the whole drive to fail. What are some other things that can make that drive fail? Oh, power fluctuations are a big one. Mm -hmm. um, a yesterday lot of we had thunderstorms. Oh, I was gosh, thinking yeah. about you yesterday. I ordered power supplies this morning. I know it's coming. So you know, we know we're <laughs> going to have a lot of people. But a lot of times the USB mm -hmm. enclosures themselves go bad. So in other words, the, the drive inside is fine, but the USB enclosure is bad. On most of those drives, if it's you know, an end of the world situation, you can open up the enclosure and take the drive out and hook it up to a different computer. Again, not an iMac, mm -hmm. but <laughs> a Power Mac you could. N n not a MacBook, but any, any PC you could. <laughs> right. uh, but uh, you know, it's just a Mac thing. Right. Uh, I don't hate Macs, I just like to make fun of you for it. Right, because uh, I, I run all Mac, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> but you hook that up to another computer and then you can usually get the data off. One exception though are the Western Digital My Books. Those use an on-chip hardware encryption. So when you send information over that USB cable through that little circuit board, it encrypts it automatically and saves the encrypted data to the hard drive. So if you take a surge, just a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. I had a gal who came in with one of those drives of my book, and uh, it had the, the board was damaged, and we had to actually repair the board because otherwise it would have cost her an extra $2,000 just to decrypt the software. Wow. It was cheaper to actually basically do microsurgery and repair the circuit board so it could decode its own stuff than it was to try mm. to actually just decode the data. That's incredible. Microsurgery. Right, yeah. but you were talking about a specific brand, Western Digital, that's one. Yeah, Western Digital is the only one that does the on-chip encryption. Are there different, uh, when it comes to brands, different uh, qualities that these external hard drives have? Absolutely, and I'll try to keep it less than technical, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in the beginning, if you come to us for a data recovery and, and you say, hey, I need a drive for you to put my data on so I can pick it up, we're always going to give you a Seagate hard drive, always. Um, main reason for that is, one, Seagates have the same failure rate as any other hard drive, but they're really easy to fix when they do fail, so they cost less to recover data from. Mm -hmm. We never use Western Digital because of the on-chip encryption. Mm -hmm. I would not recommend Western Digital, my book, Passports. The reason they call it a passport, think of, you know, Passport's a pretty secure thing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That's the whole reason they call it a passport, because it's all encrypted. If someone steals your passport and for some reason cracks it open and takes the drive out, mm. Um, it'll be encrypted. I don't understand why it's important, but you, you think they just plug it in, you know, <laughs> and use it. Right. But uh, but basically, if somebody you know takes the drive out, it doesn't work. Um, Toshiba hard drives are usually ten or fifteen dollars cheaper mm -hmm. than everything else on the shelf. However, they use a liquid suspension in their ball bearing that dries out over time, and the motor seizes up. So we have to sometimes they come in for data recovery. We actually mm -hmm. have to take a heat gun to them and heat the motor up and then get it to spin a couple times to mess that little grease around and then it'll spin long enough to recover the data from. So Seagate's the one we recommend. I try to stay away from Toshiba and Western Digital. So you like Seagate's? Seagate's Seagate. Seagate, that's the one to go to. So if someone does have that little pushover of their hard drive, if it yes. fails, can you in most circumstances get that data back and what do they need to do? A lot of times, yes. It depends what the drive was doing when it failed. Uh, sometimes when they fall over like that, if you know, a lot of times a cat, I make a joke about cats jumping on the table, you'd be surprised how often it happens. Mm -hmm. Cat jumps up on the table, gets tangled in the cord nest, yanks the drive off when it's running or copying something. That's, that's really bad. 
I mean, if it was just sitting there, not, not being used at that mm -hmm. moment, and then somebody knocked it over, nine times out of ten, that can be recovered. Uh, and we can do that all in our Omaha Service Center, where we actually have a clean room, if it gets that serious, where we actually have the, uh, the DDI-4 imager that is good for recovering most drives, as well as firmware editing tools, and all the kind of things you just don't see at a normal computer repair shop. Mm -hmm. That's why we only have it in one service center in Omaha, because... It's kind of expensive. It's a it's a few hundred thousand dollars to have the right equipment to do this. Yeah, we have a little bit of time. So you're talking about external hard drives, but some people use these cloud-based yes. uh, storage areas that they use. Yep. What do you think about those? All right. So here here's the deal with the cloud. It was kind of funny. We have a minute. In a minute, a recent <laughs> survey came out, and they actually asked, like, man on the street interview, right. um, you know, what's the cloud? And 52% of respondents actually thought the cloud involved like, a precipitation cloud. Okay. Like, what happens if the wind blows? Does my data go away? You know, yeah. oh <laughs> if there's a storm, do I lose my, my hard drive? But no, the, the cloud is uh, basically a web server where your information is stored. Mm -hmm. Now, people who have been building websites and doing things like that, the cloud is nothing special. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. another hard drive on a server somewhere. But to users, they're like, oh, I can just throw my data up there, and it's always there to come back. And that's true in most cases. The only thing you have to be careful about, though, is when you store all your data in a cloud, it's a ripe target for hackers. And we've seen some of that with Microsoft's cloud services. Uh -huh. Hackers, yes. that's the thing you got to be concerned about, go. those clouds. Schrock Innovations, three area locations, uh, two in the metro, one in Lincoln, schrockinnovations.com. I want to be a cloud hacker. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Just what the world needs. Thank you, <laughs> Thank Thor. You, yeah, great. All Thanks, right, Thor. we've got a cool shot for you in our picture of the day. Yeah, and tomorrow we're going to learn about an opportunity to save on designer home decor, and then you can stick around and see what else we've got going for tomorrow's show. We're right back.